The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. In the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, Peace be with you, and showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord, and he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retain, they are retained. Thomas called, called the twin, who was not one of the, who was not with, who was one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. When the disciples said, "We have seen the Lord," he answered, "Unless I see the holes that the nails made in his hands, and can put my finger into the holes they made, and unless I can put my hand into his side, I refuse to believe." Eight days later, the disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. The doors were closed, but Jesus came in and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he spoke to Thomas. Put your finger here. Look, here are my hands. Give me your hand. Put it into my side. Doubt no longer, but believe. Thomas replied. My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, "You believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe." There were many other signs that Jesus worked and the disciples saw, but they are not recorded in this book. These are recorded so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And that, believing this, you may have life through His name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Today is the feast of、um, the Divine Mercy, what's sometimes called、um, Low Sunday, the first Sunday after Easter. And、uh, the, the title of Divine Mercy comes from Jesus' apparition to Saint Faustina,、uh, right back in the 1940s, and who asked her to proclaim God's mercy. And part of that was to have a feast on today,、um, uh, celebrating the mercy of God. And this fits in very well with the scripture readings, when we see, first of all, Jesus breathing on his disciples and giving them authority to forgive sins, and secondly, on his、um, his wonderful attitude towards Thomas. When we think of Jesus's mercy, we're thinking right back into the Old Testament times,、um, when the word that's used to describe God's love, it's Hesed in Hebrew. Is not simply just loving us, but it's it's、um, a love that knows no end. It's he'll love us despite the fact that we go against his covenant. So again and again we see in the Old Testament, God makes a covenant with His people, and they go against it. Just one example, for instance, we might think of the 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 calf that the, the Hebrew people made when they'd been set free from slavery and they'd started worshiping that、um, made of their gold earrings and so on. And Moses came down from、uh, the mountain, and he persuaded God not to destroy all the people. God's mercy, again and again, is a steadfast, loving kindness towards His people, and so that sets a sort of tone, if you like, an understanding for God's love for us that's revealed in Jesus Christ. So it's a love that goes beyond any manifestation of that love seen in the old covenant. Because in Jesus, God has become man for love of us, and as if that wasn't enough, just to think that God has become part of His creation, 
he actually came into this world with the mission, <coughs> excuse me, the mission to die for our sins. The offering his own life as God, it was of infinite value. And uh, because he was truly man, he could represent us so that our sins could be forgiven. And that's the, the tremendous depth of God's love for us to stoop down to the cross, to the utter depths of pain, um, the depths of suffering in, in the fallen human nature and raising that nature, fallen human nature himself. So this is the depth of God's love for us. And as we read in the Gospel today, that's manifested most especially in forgiveness of our sins. So yes, of course, sacramentally, through a wonderful sacrament of confession, that we know that our sins are completely forgiven through the power of Jesus' death and resurrection. And whatever our sins might be, whether they're small sins that nobody else might notice or they might think, oh, don't be so silly, that's not really a sin, or the terrible depths of depravity that uh, reach the headlines in the newspapers, or for most of us, perhaps something in between, um, that God wishes to have mercy upon us and he gives us that embrace. I love this image of, uh, that we're given of St. Thomas. Uh, and you can rather see him saying, ha, you think he's risen from the dead, do you? You know, and uh, he doesn't want to believe that at all. So he says, well, ha, I saw those, well, he didn't see, he heard about those nails being driven in his hands and feet and the spear that went into his side, too cowardly to be there himself. Uh, and he says, I don't believe a word of it. If you're crucified, you're well and truly dead. And so he didn't want to believe that. And it, then Jesus appeared to him um, eight days later, which of course is um, low Sunday, the Sunday after Easter. And Thomas is there. And Jesus doesn't say, oh, so you wouldn't believe, would you? He doesn't say anything like that or nasty reprimands or anything like that. He just embraces him with this loving charity. And he says, look, here the, the holes in my hands and my side. That's what you wanted to see. And here I am. And I don't suppose Thomas did actually put his fingers in Jesus' hand and side. He was just awestruck. And probably most especially by Jesus' compassion for Thomas. Understanding his need, yes, for forgiveness and so on. That loving embrace, the loving, loving mercy of God. So it's a wonderful feast that we're celebrating. Eight days after Jesus' resurrection. This incredible mercy, the love um, of God that he extends to us.